Dave Loyal. Um, I've been a drummer since I was nine. I was in the, the Old Guard Fife and Drum Corps as a drummer for 12 years. Um, and I build drums. I'm the owner of Loyal Drums. And we, we took over, uh, we're part of the lineage of the Cooperman um, tradition of rope tension, snare drums, and bass drums. Um, and so I still play and build drums all day, almost every day. This is an old style um, of Kevlar head. Um, this is, uh, is it the, it's the Gassman um, head. So th this is a Swiss drum. So this is made in Basel, Switzerland, um, you know, which they have a little bit of differences between American drums and Swiss, um, Swiss drums. For one, obviously, this is, a, this is a brass shell with a, um, chrome plating. They also make them out of aluminum these days. But the functional elements are all the same. Um, the strainer is very different on a Swiss drum as well. These actually are uh, probably 11 holes on this drum, um, which is something that's, uh, it's 10 for American drums. Functionally, it's the same type of thing. So what we're gonna do is we've looked over it. Mike had originally asked if we, if we needed um, to change out the bottom head as well. Um, I said, no, this one's in good condition. There's still plenty of space um, for the head to stretch um, and the snares still have plenty of room um, in, in here. So what we need to do is find the end of the rope at first, which is here. We have a drag rope on most American drums which is what we do with the excess rope for Swiss drums. A lot of times, instead of the drag rope, which hangs down under the drum, they would put this leather on, um, which acts as kind of like a strap so you can carry the drum. And then they tend to move the rope around the, the hoop. So first step is to take all of that out and unthread this leather piece. If ropes are not, are not sealed correctly, a lot of times they'll fray. Um, and the, the rope really does need to be shortened. It doesn't need to be replaced at that point, but it does need to be shortened so that you have a fresh spot of rope um, that's, that's clear instead of, instead of being all this big massive tangle because the rope does have to be able to, to, to move through the holes in the hoop. And it's a real pain in the butt to try to do that if you, um, you know, are fighting with a big pom-pom of, of stuff on the end. One of my favorite ways to do it, um, a lot of people use heat, um, but since we're using Kevlar core rope, Kevlar does not um, melt under heat, so we actually use a cyano, cyanoacrylate glue, super glue, to seal the ends and then cut it, which leaves a nice little hard needle spot there, which is a lot easier to thread. The rope, it starts off with an eye splice, and this one is a mechanically fastened eye splice, you know, where we actually splice, like weave the rope back into itself on a lot of the twisted ropes, and we have a special knot that we do um, for the woven ropes. But this is a mechanical fastener, that's just how they did it in that, in that time period. This, being one side of the rope, is locked into that part of the hoop, and this goes through the hole, and it goes all the way around the drum, you know, up and down, up and down, up and down with these ears. Um, by the time it comes to the other side, it's, it's, it goes back through the loop. So it's a very, very simple um, mechanism. And what we need to do in tensioning a drum is actually move the slack until it comes off the drum, as, as I say it, which means that the slack moves here until it comes through this eye splice. We have to kind of work in reverse to add um, slack to the drum. We don't want to take off a bunch of paint here by abrading rope against things. Um, so what I do is I always do two things at the same time. So with this, what I like to do is I like to hold the ear at roughly the angle that the, the hole is drilled. Uh, these are, are drilled at about between a 40, 45 degree angle. Um, so if I hold the ear here, I can pull that rope as, as fast as I want to through there without abrading the surface because it's acting kind of as a guide for it. We can do the same thing this is kind of an up and down thing of sitting and standing, but the same thing on the bottom here is I can, I can just pull at that angle and you can pull as fast as you want without having to worry about taking that, that paint off of the, the shell. We don't need to completely take the rope off the drum to change a head. This hoop and this head have been on so long that both of them were actually kind of sealed down to each other, which is not a normal thing. Most people aren't gonna to need to worry about that. But the idea is that we've, we've taken enough slack and kind of evened it out around the drum enough to where we, we can now flip this kind of open, right? This side is a little bit less important as you go around the drum. You just wanna move slack to at least half the drum with the idea that you should be able to slide this head out, just like that. And then it's just a matter of taking your new head, um, and this has an internal muffle strip too, so we're actually just gonna leave this internal muffle um, in there for this, this drum. 
and just slipping it back in. This is actually roped the same way as an American drum. A lot of, um, a lot of the Swiss instruments are actually roped um, in the reverse direction. Um, so you always have to follow the rules that the, that the original drum followed. Um, so this one, the, the eye splice is, is over on this side and it, the rope goes counterclockwise around the drum, then it comes back through the eye splice um, to be able to hold everything together. So for this, you want to shift things until it's roughly, um, roughly triangular. We're not going to worry too much, be too critical about it now because we are going to have a chance to adjust that before actual tension goes on the drum. And from this point, we're just moving that slack. We want to move the slack around so that it comes out through the eye splice. Right, so we're pulling down on this rope and pulling up on this. So we're just taking the slack off. We're not actually putting too much tension on this. For me, when I'm, when I'm doing this process, um, normally um, what I'll do on a wooden drum, I might, uh, like I'll feel, I'll feel the hoop, feel if there's any rough spots. If there are, I'll take some maybe 400 grit sandpaper and just a very light scuffing of that area. And then I'll use a wax, whether it's a paste wax or something with carnauba or, um, you know, in, in a pinch, you can use a candle, something, just anything to, to give a little bit of, of uh, slipperiness um, to, to that, that surface so that the head can move freely over the bearing edge. So if you do have to take one ear off, I always take one. Some people take two or three ears off to actually change the head. It's easier for me just to do one so I don't have to reassemble. But these also have to follow the same um, convention that was set by the drum maker when this was first assembled. So this rope goes around and through the hole. Um, if you went around, through and then around, you would end up with this divot here with the paint missing on both sides of that hole. This is never directly above the hole, as you can see. Um, so you would end up with one that you could never hide. If you follow the same convention that the original drum maker um, used for the drum, then you can always cover that little spot where it takes the paint off. So now we put that end back through the ice place and this is starting to look like a drum again. A little bit more slack out. But now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pull one of these ears down. It doesn't need to be under tension. What I'm looking for is a straight line up and down on that drum. You want to make sure that it's, that it's uh, close to triangular, that this triangle looks like it's actually going vertical on the shell. And it, I just do it by eye. Um, and if you need to, you can shift, shift the hoop slightly one way or the other. That looks pretty good. So, and then from this point, we're just going to keep moving slack around the drum. You don't need to be incredibly strong to do this. Um, you just need to be persistent at it. So if you can only move a little bit of rope at a time, then just move a little bit of rope at a time and do it more. Any slack that comes out of the rope and gets taken through that pigtail or through that ice place, is good progress towards the drum being incredibly tight. So as I start to put tension on the drum, I can actually just wedge it down underneath the secondary rope, right? So again, we're gonna pull, we're just getting tension out at this point, just, or slack out really. You can see how much it kind of, uh, it's compounding interest as you go around. You keep on getting a little bit more from each one. And for some people, maybe that's enough tension. Just to, to do a, a really quick pull, you can do just that amount and be good to go. So what I do is now that I have a little bit of tension on here, um, it's time to do one pigtail. The, the premise of a pigtail, the, the basic idea is that if you, if you twist a rope, um, it's naturally going to want to bend. If it's a, a twisted three-strand rope, like some of these other drums, um, they'll tend to, there's, in one direction the, the rope strands will open up, and in one direction the rope strands will close down until they buckle. You want that type of buckle. You want that to happen. But you want to control where it goes. So I want to, I'm holding the tension with my finger there. There's not that much tension on the drum currently. But I hold that there and I twist the rope and push it up until it buckles right on top of that, that eye splice. Okay? And then that acts as kind of a hard point in the rope. And every time I put a loop under that hard point and pull it, I pull that hard point away from the drum a little bit more. So what that does is it's a tensioning knot. So by, keep, by doing that several times, you're putting much more tension on the drum. And that should be pretty, pretty solid. Um, <clears throat> But the drum's not incredibly tight at the moment, so now we're going to move on to the next step. All right, so um, here we are. This is a little bit of a controversial technique, but it is really handy in the field. 
Um, a lot of times, you know, people don't have, have equipment for, for changing heads. Uh, a lot of people think they need a drum press. You don't need a drum press to, to be able to tune a drum well. You can actually get a drum tighter by hand than you can with a drum press. There's some physics reasons for that. We're not going to get into it, but um, not at the moment anyway. So one really nice um, technique that you have to be a little bit careful with, um, especially I would only do this on a modern instrument. I would not do this on a, on a historic drum, anything that's, that's old, um, but you're probably not putting that much tension on a drum like that anyway. So to, to get the higher tension, I like to use my legs and sometimes the front, uh, my, my, the toes and the ball of my foot um, on the inside hoop, but most of the pressure is coming from the legs. It's a little bit uncomfortable, but it actually works really well. So the basic idea is that um, the same thing that we did on the table, we have the, the eye splice and we have the pigtail, and th that's a linear thing around the drum. It starts at the eye splice, it goes around the drum, up and down, up and down, um, and we're moving that slack around to come out through that eye splice and culminating in the pigtail. When I, when I tied that pigtail, I only put it with a little um, I tucked that rope under here, and that's so that if I grab this and pull, that whole thing's going to come out, and that's a good thing. We want that to happen. So at this point, um, we can kind of feel the tension. There's still a lot of uh, uh, slack on this drum. So by holding it in, in our, our, our legs here and just our toes, wear a pair of fresh socks, I actually put on brand new socks for this, um, we, we can just give a little, a little pull. So we're not, doing, we're not going crazy. We're not pushing against the shell. It's kind of like an egg. If you push down in the middle of a cylinder, it's not the best thing for the cylinder. It takes a lot of pressure this way, but, but going in, not so much. So we're just moving that slack around the drum. And if you're getting a lot of slack without putting any pressure on the ropes, then just keep doing it. That's good because now I just took out all that slack from the ropes. And if I pull this rope, it just, that, that pigtail comes right out. As this drum gets tighter and tighter, we are going to want to make sure that we're maintaining that tension as it's pulling through that eye splice. So I'm, I'm holding that rope until I maneuver into a position where I can pull that slack. Um, I'd like to brace it against my chest and just give a good um, sharp pull on this part, um, you know, on that rope that's coming through the eye splice. Then I can hold it by using um, friction, if you've ever climbed a rope before, you know, it's all about using friction to your advantage, it's not just strength, right? So with one finger, I can hold all the tension on this rope just by pushing in the right place. So, and at that point, uh, my other hand is free to start doing that same beginning of the pigtail with that hard point, which I've created right there, and loops underneath it. One, two, three, and then again, tuck. Now, I, wanna, I don't want, always want to start in this same spot. If I start here all the time, it's going to create a very um, tight side of the drum and a very loose side of the drum. If you see a drum that's been, been tightened by hand incorrectly, you're going to see a roller coaster of you know, heights on, on the drum. So that's, and that's not a good thing, so, so we try to avoid that. So what I like to do is, as a general rule, is break it down into thirds. Um, so maybe skip the first third and start a little bit farther in. But really, the actual answer is to, is to feel the tension. Feel the tension where it starts to feel a little bit loose, looser. Um, then you can start from that area and just pull, pull that slack to the front. And again, same thing. So. I'm going to start moving faster here because we've already explained what we're doing. Now we're just going to do it a little bit more. Okay, so I've done first third, second third. Now I can kind of feel to where I start losing that tension. And it looks like it's about accurate to the, the last third of this drum, roughly. So. And I keep on moving about maybe uh, four to six inches of slack on this rope out of the drum every time I'm doing this. So that's good. It's gonna start getting a little bit less as I do more, but that's the tension that's really gonna increase the exponentially at a certain point. Okay. And for now, this is probably good for the, for the explanation of it. Um, you can do this 20 times if you want to. Um, 
Like it doesn't need to be done in three or four shots around the drum. You can keep going, especially if you're not using a ton of strength with it. Any slack that's coming off the drum is, is leaves tension, right? So that's the idea. So from this point, we need to, to control the end of the rope. So we leave it tucked under there and we can do a half hitch, which is just taking that loop that's been tucked and pull all the rope through it. Right, so that'll lock that off. It's not gonna go anywhere. For an American drum, and this is gonna apply to most of the drums that, um, for the listenership here and the viewership, um, is we're gonna tie um, a drag rope. It's a very simple idea. It's also called a daisy chain. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna control, we're, we're gonna make a small loop just by twisting the rope over and pull another loop through that. So that's a slip knot, very simple. One side slips, right? So we'll do that fairly close to the pigtail. And then from this point, what we do is we, we have this loop, we put our hand into the loop. We don't put our knuckles through it because then it'll be hard for us to get our hand out. What we do is just, just the finger tips. And this is your slack hand. So this is reducing the size uh, of, of that loop until it's pretty much right there. Then you're gonna pinch this and pull without shifting anything. You're never letting go of the rope with either hand. Okay, so pinch, so reduce, pinch, pull, reduce, pinch, pull, right? And once you get into a groove with it, it's a very quick way to make use of all that extra rope. This one's a little bit short to actually drape across the drum fairly well, um, but it does work, right? And to finish that, you would just pull that end entirely through um, the, the loop and it just locks itself off nicely. Um, to, to remove this when you're going to redo this again the next time, if you take this out, you can just pull this and the whole thing unravels. Um, on this side, we'll go underneath and then I just like to weave it back through. That's a nice clean way that's very secure um, and it hides the end of the rope. There's nothing worse than seeing a big ugly um, burnt end of a rope sticking out of the side of a drum. So then that's essentially finished, um, at least for this. I might go a few more times on this drum, but you get all the basic concepts of, of what we're doing to, to change a head in this case. Um, so I hope that helps. Um, I can be reached at loyaldrums at gmail.com. I'm also on Facebook, um, Instagram, loyaldrums.com is my website. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, you can let me know um, and I'm happy to help.